Horizons, AZ off-grid unplugged cabin ranch. Um, getting close to uh, decision time and I'm facing a little bit of a quandary here. It's like, notice over there on the roof of the cabin, I'm about where the where the sun would be coming up in the middle of winter, about December 21st. And so it would still be shining directly on the cabin roof. Now my solar panels are up here on top of the awning for the RV. Now they're getting a little bit of sun. Of course, they're all really dusty now. But uh, the sun won't really be shining on them until closer to 9.30. Now the sun's over there, and these are facing south, which is a preferred way to do it, but I just can't help but believe that being on the east-west walls, a roof of the, uh, the cabin, would generate more electricity. Um, but it's... But they're already mounted up here, <laughs> which I like. The problem is, is 110 feet, roughly, of cable that I would need to connect these panels to the cabin. <laughs> and I don't know which would be better or which would suffer more losses. Leaving the panels here and running 110 feet of cable or putting two sets of panels up on top of the cabin roof. One facing east on this side and another one facing west on the other side. Put it up in uh, two strings. I would have uh, one string of six on this side and one string of six on the other side. So in the morning it would get the first immediate boost when the sun comes up. And in the evening when it's going down over there, it'll be getting the, the uh, last little boost before nightfall. And then all day long it would be shining on both sets. And then uh, I'm also going to be putting four more panels up with two separate charge controllers, just like I did before with that uh, temporary solar panel mount that I had that I moved around on the outside of the RV and the, that wooden frame thing, designing a better frame and all that sort of stuff. Let's see, right now, I'm facing directly the what direction the cabin is going. So it's just to the left of that tall peak over there. Right about there, and that little saddle right there is as far south as it goes in the wintertime. So my quandary is, again, which way would I suffer more losses? Running a 110 foot cable or putting them on the east and the west and having a, I said four extra panels scattered around places, I don't know where. But with that midnight classic 150, it can run up to 12 panels. And if I do it in two strings, Here's a good way to show you. Oops. Maybe if you can see. But there's the roof of the cabin. And that's where the sun's coming up right now. Well, it's getting close to decision time. Let me figure out what I'm going to do. Right now I'm running everything with the extension cord, but then I'm not running that much. So... Yeah, 
and the uh, photographers from Better Homes and Gardens aren't going to be here for at least a week. So this place is kind of a mess. I did get some curtains up. There's the uh, storage cabinet. I wanted to show you over here the way I got it set up. I got those two used uh, kitchen base cabinets there. The refrigerator is going to go over here up against that second blue line. That's why those blue lines are there to show me and that's how much space I lost with getting this cabinet because I was going to put it right up to that blue line all the way up to the ceiling. So, oh you can't possibly have that much stuff to store. <laughs> so, anyway I got the uh, uh, TV stand in a couple days ago. Put that all together. So now I got my uh, computer monitor and the TV. The reason I use that as a computer monitor is that uh, the it doesn't switch sources anymore. It fights me every time, and so I just leave it now on. The computer as the source. And I got my uh, cooler over there. Got my little uh, two heaters right there. I had to use one yesterday morning. I was going to use one this morning. <laughs> it was only like 50 degrees yesterday morning. I thought it was cold. So, but I got that one all put in place. The big one, the white one. Haven't hooked it up yet. Uh, I have a love seat that's coming that's going to go there. But, uh, and you see I got curtains all the way around. I got some more boards up. But, uh, it's coming. And then got this storage thing. It's all full of tools and stuff right now. But, uh, that's what's been going on around here. That uh, tall peak there, just to the left of that is exactly where the cabin is facing, I believe. And that's about midpoint from the summer solstice to the winter solstice. So I, I can't help but believe that the solar panels up there on the roof would actually work very well. Even though everybody recommends that they be facing due south, the problem with that is, like I said, is over there on the RV, the sun doesn't even start shining on them until about 9.30, summer and winter. It's uh, 6.30 here now, and I think I'm getting about 25 watts coming in on the solar panels over there. Whereas I can't help but believe that if they're up on the roof here, I'd get a lot more. Get those batteries up to float much earlier than I do now. Now it takes till about noon. Teacher Ruger, teacher, teacher who's boss? Hey Remy, you're a good puppy aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to share with you the beauty of the spot. Sitting here on the porch, <laughs> that's where I hang out a lot. It's been windy all day. It's been blowing stuff all over. You can see a soda can out there. But the, the sun is setting. 
see how observant some of you are. I had to put a sign up here for UPS and FedEx. So I'm spending all day every day inside the cabin. And I'm not coming back over to the RV until at night to go to bed and feed the dogs and all that stuff. But they're still dropping everything off over here. And I'd be waiting and say it was delivered. It's like, no, nobody ever knocked on the cabin door. Well, I'd walk over here and that's where I'd find this stuff. But, uh, and if you're observant, I don't know. The Jeep is gone. And their brother was here. He had a towed into town to get it fixed. Got it back. Works beautiful. He took it to Nito's Auto Clinic. Just on the east side of I-19 in Ajo Way. Like I only charged a hundred bucks to tow it there. And this is my solar light setup. You got lights and all that stuff in there. I got a rat trap there. Got another one on the inside. So it starts and runs beautiful. Been here a couple days now and the only place I've driven is up to the mailbox. I don't have to go anywhere. I don't need to go anywhere. I'm, you know, so I appreciate it. Thank you, Billy, but <laughs> now I got to figure out some way to keep the damn pack rats out of it. It's good to have it back again. I keep thinking all the stuff I need to, to go get. But just like the problem I've had for the last two years, no money to get it. <laughs> so, that's life on the ranch. <laughs> According to the old westerns, that means there's a dead body, right? I don't know if you can see any of them, but there's a bunch of them over there. They're probably flying over an area about a hundred yards from the front of the cabin. Sky everywhere tonight. That is going right down that the little pyramid shaped hill over there. Mountain, whatever. I don't know what's capturing on the camera, but it sure is beautiful.
I'll record this night. Got up to 103 today. Now it's about 90. And you can see that there's a beautiful breeze. Oh, that makes it nice. Oops. 